No. Do you want another belly rub? Do you want another belly rub? So everyone comes in and we sit around dad and they give him the medications and that was that. This is, it's a little dusty because I had it in storage, but uh, this is dad. And uh, yeah, dad absolutely loved his Cleo and uh, he never got over the loss of mom when she passed. You said 2013. So we've got the autopsy report. And it's frustrating because anything with his heart, so he had a pacemaker, um, he took... He felt that he was more of a nuisance to the, to the staff there and that um, he was, it was just easier just to go and not be a bother to anybody. dog meeting. <laughs> I didn't realize that it was for like everyday people, basically, right? Until my sister Sue said, hey, no, this is actually a thing in Canada now. And so the whole premise of the legislation, I think, is built on a discriminatory kind of approach to people with disabilities. I would say it's a big problem. I mean, in my patient practice, I have had patients who have mentioned that they'd rather die and choose made than be poor. But I do think it's reasonable to worry about how laws like this change the culture of dying and the culture of, um, you know, living with illness. I believe that most Canadians think that this is a service of compassion offered for people who have nothing left to be offered and they're being offered death as a way out. When in fact, um, the system is being applied so liberally and so easily in such a short time period that people are dying who would have recovered with greater care and resources to live. <laughs> Cutest dog ever, aren't you? Yes. So instead of giving them a hand, helping them with services and, you know, supporting them and making sure that they're stable, this is just the easy way out and it's cheaper.